Hello, YouTube. Um, Andy, Camera Reacts here with the next one for me to react to. And this one, it's going to be Dreamcatchers, a mess series, number six of seven from Insomniac. Uh, for those that don't know who I am, I'm a Korean American that's followed Korean mu music since the late 80s to the early 2010s. And then I've stopped and I'm playing catch up. And Dreamcatcher has become uh, an incredibly favorite. Incredible, right? They are my favorite group right now, alongside Dream uh, Stray Kids and a few others are right be behind them. But I've been absorbed in the Dreamcatcher. Um, Dreamland, I guess. So this one is the sixth part, like I said, from Insomnoxy, and I'm just going to get right into it. It's a little loud. Sorry. <laughs> oh no, this is another one where Handong's not around. She's kind of so funny. So, <laughs> how could you? <laughs> Hi, Dami. Nope. Wow. It's something I would so do. Nope. 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 Ah, my youngest daughter looks good in pink hair, doesn't she? <laughs> that is so sibling energy. <laughs> Older sibling and younger sibling. Is like, wow. <laughs> I saw that hair whip, uh, Tommy. There you go. Clap. <laughs> do I know that song? I don't know if I do. Maybe I don't know that song. I've heard that melody before. I don't know if I know the song. He's harmonizing with her. Yeah. Tommy being shy is so cute, actually. Why? What did the doll do to you? Oh. 
So this must be some kind of interview because it's in English. That's an old, old game. I don't know the song. I don't know Rocket Punch. No idea. Oh, is it already over? Way too short. Where's my mouse? There it is. Alright. Watch number two. Is that you running? I think Xion might be become bias number three. They're all biases, but you know, if I had to choose. Nope. I love this. <laughs> Tommy's like, loves making fun of her. Or teasing her, I should say. Nope. I think she there she was trying to match actually. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> you can't really tell from the volume stuff, but um it, it sounds like Sua and um Kayan are the loudest members. Uh trust me, I Anyways, um, I definitely have had, my wife wants to know her voice will go up uh, and especially if we're in the car and she's in the passenger side. There are times where my my right ear just, you know, I'm like, hey, <laughs> I'll just kind of gently block it to indicate to her that I was a little loud. <laughs> I've done that before too. This is such sibling energy right here. Like, if I had, I can imagine like just three siblings in this, save to you, <laughs> three siblings in the car and just bumping into each other. <laughs> so I was like, that's an amazing answer. <laughs> My youngest daughter looks really good in this hair color. 
다시 한 번. 여기 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 That's a pop song. It's an American song, right? I'm guessing that's Xion harmonizing with her, I can't tell, but Jiu sounds always good. <laughs> oh, she's imitating the camera person. Someone got their driver's license a year ago. Tangyeonhaji. So for those that don't know the point of the Tangyeonhaji game, it was, I think, became widely popular in Korea thanks to a show called X Men. Or Dream Team. X-Men, I think. Uh, way like in the mid-2000s or something like that. 2000 zeros. Um, and the whole point of the game is to... Um, two people get together in front. They face each other, not this close usually. And then they say... So one person will say to the other person something. Uh... Person A will say something to person B, and person B must say, of course, or tangyeonhaji. Right? And then if they do so, then person B will say something to A, and person A must say tangyeonhaji. Or uh, if they don't, or they can't, rather, um, <laughs> uh, then the game, then the, the victor is the person that said something, and the other person could not reply tangyeonhaji, or of course. Uh, It's definitely not a game you would play amongst. I've never played that game in real life. I've never seen anyone play that in real life. I've never seen anyone. Um... I have a hard time imagining people doing the Tiny United game just for fun. I think that game would be for like broadcasting such as this such as x-men such as tv shows such as youtube shows um because honestly we all know it's kind of like a good a joke right so you just i mean if someone just kept saying whatever i'll probably say Tangyeonhaji, of course of course knowing that's all a joke right um but a show you kind of have to keep safe face right you have to make sure your public image is intact so um that's why the game is more funny like there's a long in the x-men series especially if people come in front of each other where they were like there's some kind of history there uh one example that i recall from x-men a long time ago is between yunune which was a baby fox member and kim jong-guk which is a turbo member who is now a soloist he's a big jacked guy in running man and so for a long time at that time there was uh the running gag or you know 
the the storyline right was uh, that they were secretly uh, had a crush on each other, Jung, Kim Jong Kook and Yoon Eun Hye, and uh, you know the the jokes were like whenever it's between Kim Jong Kook and some other guy that is trying to beat Kim Jong Kook, and then he's still the person against Kim Jong Kook will say something like, "Hey, you and Yoon Eun Hye were you know secretly uh, at the cafe yesterday, right?" And then Kim Jong Kook will you know have to say "Tang Energy" if he wants to win the game, or he'll stop because he doesn't want to say anything because it's it's all for fun right so anyways i don't know it's it's i've always felt the song the game is not for people in your life i thought i always thought it was for tv <laughs> correct me if i'm wrong by the way that was a long way to talk about this game I feeling I don't- I won't like that song, I have a feeling. There was not a lot of Yuyun cuts, I feel like, this time around. But that's fine. Hopefully the next one- I see the next one with uh, Tami- uh, Handong's face here. Hopefully the next one has Handong in it. Um, <laughs> never a dull moment with Dreamcatcher's uh, content, of course. Um, ah. Gotta relax the cheeks. Hold on. So this time I didn't pause in terms of like Korean language stuff because the translations were fine and there wasn't really it was all so in my it was all pretty there's not a wordplay not a lot of wordplay or anything actually no wordplay really um, so nothing to really pause to stop and say anything about which is fine. Um, let's see. <laughs> I'm gonna turn the volume down and just kind of talk over about it, and maybe I'll something will trigger my memory, and I can talk about it. But um, oh, actually, let's talk about these snacks real quick, just because I can. I won't recognize all of them, but I know Gorkai Kon. This is reversed, by the way, the video. Gorkai. Gorkai. Kon. I think it's corn. So it's um, it's like a. Do you guys want to know what a bugle is? It's like um, it's like a triangular shaped um chip made out of corn base. It's a corn chip, not like a potato chip. And uh, you could put it on your finger. It's like a witch's fingernail thing. Like I used to put them all on one finger and like do this. So. Korea, I don't know where it originated from, but Korea had it for way before bugles came out in in America. At least not in the wa in my area. Um, bugles didn't exist. Um, Gokai Kon has existed before. Um, before the nineties, I know. I remember that. I remember having it in the eighties. Uh, but I never remember seeing bugles here until like late nineties or two thousand. I feel like it, I feel like it just didn't exist. 
so that's something that I recall. I don't know what any of these are though, because uh, they're all I don't I didn't ever like candy that much. I liked chips. I don't like candy that much. If I have if someone offers me candy, of course I'll eat it, but you know, I'll never seek out candy. This is a home run ball, but this purple means it's not the chocolate flavor, it's something else. This might be a topoki chip. <laughs> and here's the Kokai coin again. That's the home run ball. Bias number one and two, and potential number three. The only line, I guess, is uh, drawing my attention. Like I said, they're all biases. I'm just kind of, I'm gonna do this until all of them become biased up to number seven, and now there's no more biases. They're all biases. <laughs> so this is the Bokara. Xion looks really good in the Bokara era. I feel like they all always look good, but. Certain looks on Xion look really good on her, like Boka. Kion looks really good with this pink hair and the space buns. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Islamic Sea's timing for the sound effects really, like, drive home some of these moments though. Was like doing some kind of scatting over there. She was like, Are you gonna do it? <laughs> she was smiling, laugh is so like it makes me happy. By the way, did you did you notice the uh, over here on the left? Chiu was like poking Sua, and Sua was like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> yeah. Tami is also pretty shy, or her body language makes it look like she's shy because she's kind of she kind of slouches, right? Plus, she gets uh, squished quite a bit. The doll. Is it a hamster? <laughs> Anyways, um, <laughs> they kind of border on um, the. The gay, the the gay specter a little bit, right? A spectrum, 
in terms of uh, how they interact sometimes. I think Sua and Xion specifically tend to um, straddle that line. <laughs> I've mentioned this before, but in Korean culture... So let me, let me hold up and say... Um, Korean culture... Gay and lesbian, you know, that stuff is LGBTQ plus. Um, it's still widely unaccepted in Korea. It's rather, it's widely uh, frowned upon to show it. There is no like, as far as I can tell, um, there isn't like some kind of like us versus them mentality there, but it's definitely like the stereotype. Not stereotype. The social norm to not show to to try and keep that a secret, so to speak. It's gotten better nowadays, uh, but it, especially like in the '90s um, and before, like and even like some of the 2000s, and even still, like I said, now um, celebrities, especially before, um, they had to hide. That the fact that they were um, that they were um, of the LGBTQ side. There was one very famous transgender, um, Hadi Su was her name. Uh, she became famous, but she got a lot of hate. She had a lot of anti as well. Anti is like anti fan, anti fan. So the Koreans abbreviated that as antis, um, and. She got a lot of, um, she was very popular uh, on TV shows and such, but she was very, um, a lot of people did not like her as well. There's a gentleman, uh, actor or comedian, I forget which one, probably an actor first. What was he, a comedian first? A bald dude with glasses. He came out as gay and he was stunned um, for a while, but he was such a nice guy. He had so many friends in, in the celebrity world so he, he eventually was able to come back into the spotlight um and um you know he and he's become more accepted but definitely there's this there's a population of people that do not like him just solely because he's gay um but the funny thing is as i say that is gay jokes considered fairly funny <laughs> um accepted in some form uh you know it, it, it's you could you could straddle that line of being uh, of, of joking about it like as in like you could you know do what sua and xian was doing 20 years ago and it'd still be affected uh, uh, acceptable um somewhat uh but as soon as you actually admit that you're gay or something like it'll your career was going to be on hiatus for a few years at least that bald guy i just mentioned he probably had to like stay out of the spotlight for at least five ten years before he came back and i guess social um acceptance of the 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 lgbtq started to shift a little bit and he was able to come back and like i said he had a lot of celebrity friends he's a very nice guy from what i can from what i hear of it and uh so I think he was able to come back because he's he's um he did nothing wrong other than just admit that he's gay. You know, so that's a very interesting part of cult Korean culture that um despite all the progress and the globalization and um the social but there's definitely parts of Korea where it feels fairly old as well and i think that's not it's not just true for korea i'm pretty sure a lot of countries kind of fit that definition uh quite a bit even america uh we, there's been big movements on the lgbtq stuff and um but you know we're still we're still where we are <laughs> um personally you know i try to stay away from it mainly only because it's not uh only because it has an effect on my life so much, but I feel like um, there shouldn't be laws against gay marriage, for example. What's the point of banning that? 
<laughs> Anyways, I'm not going to get into that topic. That's, if you guys want to talk to me about that stuff or are interested in hearing my two cents on it, love to share it. But for now, I'm focused on Dreamcatcher and Korean culture. Uh, so clear the desk. Let's move on. So, by the way, she said "budamsuroa," which is which is burdensome. Is probably the best word to translate it to, but I feel like it should it it probably translates more accurately, like contextually, to like it's too I thought I had a word and I forgot. Mm. It's more like it's too cringe. It's too, from a contextual standpoint, but the word itself means burden. Like if you get budam, it's burden. Um, budam suro is burdensome. Um, but when, in, when used in this context, I feel like it doesn't mean that same exact word. So yeah, I don't know. The nuances, right? I think the burdensome word still gets the point across as intended, but I thought there was a better word for it that I just can't remember now. Time. Time. Stop. Kayan doing that sound is hilarious. Uh, I'm just looking at the the feed that I get. This is where my information comes from all the times. Like this twice pre-release English track. I have no idea what it means, but it was released and it's a music video. I'm like, oh, hey, I got that to look at. Um, Dreamcatcher has some notes and there's my youngest daughter on the front. You know, they're, they're, they stroll down and there's a lot of um, stuff I could kind of just take hints about that's coming out recently or, or is in trend of course there's a lot of these that are three years old for example so anyways um <laughs> that's it uh i think i've talked enough i think this video has long been overdue to end um as always thanks for being here if you have any suggestions let me know i know i have a lot of songs to get to i have some single uh, dreamcatcher singles i need to get to i have the primavera i have um a lot of stuff that I need to get to, plus the uh, extra content, the Dreamcatcher notes and the Dreamcatcher drama and the, you know, the, the soap opera spoof that they did and a bunch of stuff. I need to get to it. Just got to find time. <clears throat> okay. So with that said, um, if there's all there's other stuff you want me to talk about or see or listen or whatever, uh, I think there was a Dreamcatcher video. Someone was several people have mentioned a video where there was like a bad translation for it, but that's like the only subtitle version of it. And they, you were interested in seeing me watch it and talk about some of the Korean that may not be translated properly or um, is not translated at all. Maybe I don't know what I forget what that video was. I don't think I was given a link, and if I was, I apologize. I did not say it. Uh, if you remember what that video is, please, please uh, leave it back in the comment section. 
so I can save it this time and get to it the next time um, I get around to it. I uh, you know, really, 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 really want to get to it. So let me know what that one was specifically uh, amongst other stuff. Okay, with that said, if you haven't already, uh, like the video, helps the algorithm out, helps other people see my video content. Hey, Dreamcatcher fans, Insomnias, others. There's a dude named Andy around here. Um, would love to have you guys check this out. Um, and as always, um, subscribe helps me if, if you haven't already subscribe because it helps me understand you guys enjoy the content and also keeps me motivated to make the next one. Always appreciate the subscriptions. It's funny, like one day it says, you know, uh, 2040 or something like that, 400. And then the next day it says 2,398. It's like, oh, I lost two subscribers total in a day. That sucks. And then it goes up to like 2,400 or, or 41 or something like that. It, it, it's a it's a tough world out there. People um, unsubscribe quite often as well. So the more subscriptions I get, if you enjoy this stuff, please help me out. Um, I'm guessing that, by the way, the unsubscribers are probably people that subscribe to me for other groups, but then I've started to show favoritism <laughs> to DC uh, Dreamcatcher and Stray Kids, and uh, they probably are uh, are leaving because I'm not really doing stuff they're interested in, and that's totally fine. Um, I kind of knew this would happen. I kind of knew I would start gravitating towards a specific kind of content. The nice thing about what I was started earlier was that I was doing two, three, four videos a day, is that I had enough bandwidth, enough time, making enough time to do a bunch of stuff. Now that I've, I'm doing you know, five to seven videos a week, or, or even less sometimes, 47, 46 a week, um, you know, my my ability to, to react to everything has narrowed down quite a bit. And this is that's the unfortunate part about trying to prioritize my, my personal life uh, first and my work life. But it is what it is. I still have you guys. So thank you, um, as always. Um, and finally, uh, have a good day. Oh, wait, before that, many hearts to see if you're still here. Have a good day. Good evening. Uh, good morning, wherever you are, whatever time it is. Be safe. Take care of yourselves. And I'll see you next time. Bye.